In this training, we will introduce you to XPath and explain what it is, why we need it, and how XPath can be used to repair agents and fix certain types of errors. Before we get into the training, it's important to understand that no website is perfect, and there's an infinite variety of website formats. We've attempted to accommodate as many formats and styles as possible. As a Mozenda user, you may discover that certain sites are more difficult to use than others. If some automatic features in the builder are not working properly, or if you get errors that are difficult to fix, it could be a good time to use XPath to solve the problem. To understand what XPath is, let's look at an example of when it's used. We'll start with an agent that has entered into an error state. This agent collects product information. The page list action clicks the next button to advance the page. During testing, this agent returns an item not found error when the page list action attempts to click the next page button. I've tried to repair it using built-in features, such as adding an alternate location, without success. Let's discuss how XPaths work and how they are used to fix this error. You'll notice two new panels you might not have seen before, showing the selected actions XPath and the website's HTML. Every object on a web page, such as the next page button, has a location on that page's HTML. When an action is created that targets that object, such as a page list action, Mozenda uses the object's location in the HTML to find the object on the page. The written location of the object within the HTML is called the XPath. This website has an abnormal format, so the automatically generated XPath can't find the next page button in the HTML. I'm going to manually write a new XPath that can accurately identify the object in the HTML. Notice that the XPath looks similar to a folder address on your computer. A folder address references a folder and the folders inside it, and the folders inside them, going down until you reach the target file. The hierarchy from top to bottom to get to a specific file is called a path. The file address specifies that path. This is exactly how an XPath works. HTML is organized into a similar hierarchy to files on your computer, and the written path from the top all the way down to the target object is called an XPath. Instead of folders, HTML is organized into nodes. Many nodes, called parent nodes, have nodes inside them, called child nodes. I can use the XPath to navigate down from parent to child until I've reached the target item, in this case, the next page button. Similar to folders, nodes can have different names, such as HTML or body and parent nodes can have several child nodes with the same name. As you can see here, the next page button is contained within one of two child nodes with the same name, span. They both fall under their parent node, A. When a parent node contains multiple child nodes of the same name, the XPath cannot simply use the node names. It must also use a number to specify which child node of that name to select. For example, this XPath specifies that the next page button is found in the first span child node of its parent, the A node. Now that we know a little bit about how XPaths work, let's examine the HTML so we know what they look like when we write our XPath. The node that contains the next page button has an attribute. Attributes are attached to the node and frequently contain information about that node's purpose or content. Fortunately, this node's title attribute has a value which plainly identifies that it contains the next page button. I'll use this information to write an XPath. I'll start by deleting the default XPath written by the builder. Rather than writing an XPath that goes from top to bottom, I'll write an XPath that searches the entire HTML, indicated by a double forward slash, for a node that meets specific criteria. I want to search for an A node. Within square brackets, I'll describe what this A node looks like. I know it has an attribute, indicated by an at sign, called title, with a value of next page. I'll make sure it matches exactly what I see in the HTML. 
To confirm that the XPath is selecting the right item, I'll select away from the page list action and then select it again. This highlights the action's target object on the page. As I test the agent, I can see it gathering results from multiple pages of the list without error. This means that the action properly locates and clicks on the Next Page button. Because XPaths are sometimes necessary to augment the automated features of the tool, the most effective Mozendi users become proficient at implementing XPaths in their agents. This concludes Part 1 of the Introduction to XPaths, where we learned what an XPath is and the value of XPaths in the extraction process. Click here for more Help Center resources on XPaths.